So it's probably going to form an LLC with smart. the FFL, keep it separate, and uh, that's smart. Do something. Yeah, I have a class five EIEIO. Clint, Clint, Clint. Meet the Pressers with Matt Mallory and Clint Necro. Brought to you by Public Safety and Education and the Trigger Pressers Union. This episode is brought to you by Saber Red, pepper spray and safety products for all Americans. Next Level Training, makers of CERT training products. Mantis, Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Firearms Owners Against Crime, Institute for Legal, Legislative, and Educational Action. Meet the Pressers is also supported by other shows, companies, and our Patreon members. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, to Meet the Pressers. Meet the Pressers is a safe place for trigger pressers to congregate and fellowship and talk about guns, gear, training, gadgets, political activism, rights, and liberties. But tonight, we have two very special guests, and my esteemed colleague, Matt Mallory, is going to introduce them. Take it away, Matt. Hey, everybody. Matt here. And we have Tom and Karen from Secure It. Uh, Secure It's a local company close to me. Uh, as you can see, they've adorned the wall behind me here and uh, we're glad to have them as a sponsor as well as uh, to talk to them and now is a perfect time with everything going on with the uh the very safe company and 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 what's happening there so we we can we can definitely uh, uh direct people to a second amendment true second amendment company so tom and karen thanks for coming on and uh why don't you uh why don't each of you give a little bit of background short little elevator speech kind of like how you got into the industry and and how uh obviously karen you came to be with 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 secure it and uh tom how the uh the brainchild uh was born karen go ahead okay ladies so, first. <laughs> several years ago or longer than that um i found the industry uh first i would um found my way into handguns. And uh, then that became all the guns. Um, I became an instructor. That is a long story in and of itself. Um, but after that, I found out, well, prior to shooting guns, I was always a writer. And then I was introduced to an editor at Athlon Outdoors. So they're the public uh, publishing house for ballistic combat handguns, all of those magazines. Um, and he said, you know, Karen, you can write in this industry. And I'm like, really? So um, I sent a sample article and he sent me back 10 assignments. So that kind of started my my whole, you know, road in this industry. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. Um, I met Tom. I think Tom was it about six years ago. Um, he wanted to have a female um, come to New York as he was coming out with a new product. So he wanted a female firearms instructor. Uh, and I also wrote, so I went out there and, you know, we worked on product development for this. Um, after that, he was just a really great guy. And I fell in love with secure it. I fell in love with decentralized storage. I'd never heard about anything like that before. I hated the big heavy safe I, you know, had at that time. And, um, he hooked me up. And after that, that was the only safe company I would write about. Um, as a writer, you kind of have to stay impartial, you know, I don't ever say what, you know, this is my favorite this, or this is my favorite that, but when it came to a safe, I was all in. Um, it's the only safe company I've ever written about. And then about a year ago, um, I noticed that Secure It was hiring and I, I was like, oh, I might want to get a little more diversified, not keep all my eggs in one basket. And so I reached out to Tom and he got me in touch with our CMO, Chris, and they hired me and my role is pretty, um, uh, diverse but it's fun um and i still write and i still i still instruct but yeah so that's how i that's a very short version of how um <laughs> of my journey and how i met tom and came into secure it so very cool yeah, it was a, uh, i get the weapon storage in 2002 running a business selling laptop storage and security products and a guy just called and said hey can you guys store mp5s i'm like sure what's well, an mp5 <laughs> and uh, he was with the fbi and we talked for about 20 minutes. I started doing research and quickly found out the military was struggling with armories, started looking at weapon storage, knowing nothing about it. And I worked with the company that made one of our laptop cabinets to develop 
our first weapon storage system. This is a Canadian firm. They were working for a Canadian military. I was distributing in the U.S. We parted ways. I started working closely with U.S. Army Special Forces. There were some problems with the racking system we had that I didn't like. They didn't want to, they didn't, we were working together, but they wouldn't make changes. In 2008, we developed the Secure Tactical Weapon Storage Platform, now called Cradle Grid. Patented that year, uh, showed it to uh, USAFEC at the time, which is now part of SOCOM, Army Special Forces. And by 2011, we were the primary supplier to the US military. It just blew up. And then we got into retail in 2015. And then, yeah, we were looking to develop some handgun storage, some solution, new products. And, you know, I'm an expert until your hand touches the gun that I'm not. I'm a storage expert. I'm not a hmm. firearm. I don't pass myself off as someone. I like to shoot a lot. I take training whenever I can, but I'm not that guy. So we put a team of people together to bring in actual trainers to better understand some of the challenges associated with access because nobody was talking about it. Mm-hmm. And other than us, still nobody's talking about the concept of access as it relates to mm-hmm. storage. My guns are all locked up. I can't, camera doesn't show up. I've got a big wall of cabinets, but other than what's behind, I put these up behind me for show for today, but in my locked cabinet from my, my chair here, I could be in a high ready position from this chair in less than three seconds. They're five feet away. Because I practice. I mean, I just, I train for access and I'm very fast at it. And that's what we're trying to bring into the market. So we're, uh, yeah, Karen, you know, we met, worked together. We bump into each other at SHOT Show. And it's, hey, it just, and it just, one of those things where it clicked from day one and we just stayed in touch. And then it was like, wait, she might work for us? I guess, oh, this is so cool, Chris. You got to talk to kids. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's been a good relationship now. It's, uh, a lot of good stuff happening. So I'm well, very excited right. about the future and just to kind of get this message out. Definitely. I, the, um... I salute that you you looked for experts on after the gun is unracked. Mm-hmm. A lot of times people just figure they know the next three steps after whatever it is that they're teaching. And, yeah. you know, people will train in isolation. They'll train with the gun here at a ready position, but they won't train carrying the gun or they won't train accessing the gun from a box. And I know Matt does this. I do this too. And, uh, you know, like home defense classes, I'll encourage people to bring their lock boxes with them if they can, you know, if it's not bolted to the wall or something, let's practice retrieving the gun. You know, how are they storing it inside the, the uh, cabinet or the, the locking device and can they defeat it without looking at it? You know, so uh, I know some of your products right. are very easy to get into once you know how they work. And I think that's, you're right. People aren't so concerned about access when they should be, if they're using that as a tool of defense. Yeah, I would say there's fast access, then there's somebody shooting at you fast access. There's it's it's a you know, it's just it's a different it's a different experience. I, I have no firsthand experience, but you build muscle memory so that you don't have to worry about it. You know, that's part of the yeah, get them neural path get the neural pathways locked up. Yeah, I also, um in I, the I gun think... industry, if I pass myself off as something I'm not, I beat in a live. Yeah, cred- you know, credibility. It's it's there's a there's a credibility issue you have to you have to maintain. Well, there's a there's a safe company out there that is getting eaten alive because they did pass themselves off as something. <laughs> so you know so let, let's let's yeah. talk let's talk about that as far as um yeah. you know keeping yeah. the the codes and giving the codes over because you guys what made me think of having you guys on and why I reached out to to Karen and and you Tom was to uh to talk about that and get the word out about your company not just because you're local to me and and you know you support us we want to support you in as many ways as possible as well and get the good word out that you don't keep the master codes there there's why don't you elaborate to that a little bit with the the message you put out there publicly well we came out when that news story broke i was on a road trip getting my daughter to college i was going down to see chris our cmo in florida so I stopped, jumped in my hotel room, checked in early. We immediately recorded a press release. We printed a press release and recorded one. And I was shocked at the vacuum in our industry. Mm. There's, there's no other company, to my knowledge, still has come out with, with a published policy. Wow. And the research I did um, as best I could, I couldn't find another company that doesn't keep – every single company out there, safe company, keeps backup access codes – their fear is warranty work or somebody gets locked out that they they feel they need to keep a backup code. 
So if somebody forgets their combination, they can, they, most of them don't give it over the phone. You have to call locksmith, locksmith calls, but there's a database and all these companies and most of them that have the model of the safe, the name of the owner, the address and a code to open the safe. Hmm. And I'm not sure why they're not, why there's, there's silence out there. I mean, a lot of safe companies are talking about the buzz and the excitement of like, wow, we're getting more business because Liberty's tanking. But you guys are doing the same thing. You just haven't caught. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to bash the industry. I'm saying, guys, right. you know, CEOs, get in front of a camera, state your policy. Just, mm -hmm. just be honest with your customers. Tell us, tell us what you're doing, how you do it, why you do it. It's a uh, transparency is a wonderful thing, but most CEOs, certainly in the gun industry, are pretty scared of it. You never see them speak ever. With, with, uh, you know, my, my. Um law enforcement background and stuff, it makes me think that somebody, we all know that customer service has kind of gotten worse mm -hmm. since COVID. It's mm -hmm. hard to find people. Uh, it's hard to find good people. It's hard to keep people. All that stuff is is rife in the industry and in, in most, most companies across multiple industries. So I could just envision, and I'm thinking like on the, the negative side of it, where a company's got this database, they get an employee that's maybe not an, you know, they, they pick whoever they can to try to get the work done. And next thing you know, that employee gets this shopping list of places to hit and they don't need to break into the safe. They can get the code. And then they that's just- That's a really interesting point too, because like everyone, when all of this happened, they were, people are zeroing in on if there's a warrant or if there's this, but I think that the, the biggest takeaway is the fact that most people had no idea there's a second code. Right. People are, mm -hmm. are, were like, wait a minute, there's another code to access my safe. I think that even I didn't know that that existed. I know when I saw Liberty's statement, I reached out to Tom right away and I'm like, what is this? There's a, there's another code. And he was like, oh yeah. He's like, we don't keep any of them. And then that started, like, I started thinking about, well, that would be the same with replacement keys. And if they keep the serial number and like all the things. So um, even if it's not, I mean, if, if there's a warrant, right. Even if nobody gives the code, they're going to access your safe. If they saw it open, they get a lot. I mean, it, that's, but the, but the biggest point is that people don't have full autonomy over their safe. Um, and they don't even know this, like they buy the safe, they get the default code, whatever. They have no idea this other code exists. And then I think it made people very uneasy with the state of everything and how everything is going and, you know, things like that in the world today. So I, I think that was what shocked most people. And then like with our customer service department, um, nothing's like you, you call, you get a live person. So our phones were blowing up. Our customer service department was slammed because people wanted mm -hmm. to know, hey, do you guys have codes? Do you have, you know, all the things? So um, when Tom did that press release, it wasn't just, you know, a marketing ploy. It was an honest statement because we had so many people, you know, inundating our customer service department wanting to know. And, uh, but it's an interesting point because, everyone else was very, very quiet. And, um, you know, I would encourage anybody, whoever your safe company is, you probably should find out, you know, is there a second code? Is there a backup? You know, what are, what is your policy? And like Tom said, everybody's just being quiet. Well, I mean, how often do credit card companies get data breached and all that information mm -hmm. goes out? You yeah. know, so if, if I were, you know, a halfway smart criminal and was able to breach the the firewall at a safe company, I would know the names and address and the code to get into every single one of those things there. And, you know, that's that's not good information to have available, right? You know, not to mention no. if if a tyrant, uh, a tyrant legislator or or executive were to get a hold of that information, that's always, you know, that's always a, a thing that we have to be concerned with too. But uh, it just, it makes sense that they would publish their their policy on that and allow consumers to be you know, educated before they invest their money. Cause a lot of those things like those saves, that's an investment, man. That's not like, you know, that's not like a, a $30 box at Harbor Freight that, you know, you put your gun in just to keep your toddler from getting to it. You know, those are some real investments there with those larger safes. Yeah. yeah I kind of look at that as not only like an, uh, it's an ethical and a moral thing that they did too, because people are buying their product to protect and safeguard their, their investments, their tools of self-defense, the things that may, help to protect their children. I think you hit on the, the fear of the, if you get a political group in power, 
that just simply subpoenas the safe company. Remember, when you buy a safe, a tractor supply, you get it home. First thing you open up is register your safe for your warranty. Mm -hmm. There's your database. You're sending them all the information, who you are, the model of your safe. They've got everything. They've got a combination for the lock. And I... I I, I pose that question to online, all the CEOs saying, why do you ask for a register? We don't ask for a registration for warranty. Our warranty is transferable. We, we, it, it, I mean, it doesn't matter if you bought the safe directly from me or you bought it at a garage sale because somebody didn't need it. See, if you think about some of the mandatory, uh, the mandatory uh, storage laws that are being proposed, yeah. where they would require you a particular type of device, yep. you have to register that device and then they know who has it. They've got a back door to get in there and get it. Yep. So yeah, the the uh, the nastiness of the proposed legislation or the stuff that's in place in states like New York, especially, is that's that is all a backdoor way for confiscation and registration. And, and it's so sad because I think as a society we're so conditioned. Because think about the things you buy that you automatically register for a warranty: your washer, your dryer, you know, yeah. your appliances. Mm -hmm. So I think so like, people get these safes, they think, oh, I need to register. I don't want to avoid my warranty. We're so used to that. Mm -hmm. They're not thinking, you know, the contents inside your safe and then all the other things. So, yeah. The sheeple. Mm -hmm. We just and follow most, along. We did some research. We got asked a lot about what can I do to remove or factory reset my lock? And there are some locks out there. If you've got a safe, take the brand of lock, because usually it's a secure RAM or a USG, there's several locks and Google it for set, you know, reset to factory default. Some you can, but a lot you can't. Once the master code, like I think it's secure. And once you set a master code, it's permanently there forever and you can't change it. Wow. And it's not something, it's not something that's talked about or, or people think about, but yeah, it's there. So you can swap locks, though, I believe, on mo most safes if you're really worried about it. Hmm. That's um, good brand point. for brand. You can just simply order a lock from the manufacturer, and they'll send it to you with the master with the, with the ability to set a master code or not and all that, all the information. Sounds hmm. like a new side business where you guys could replace. <laughs> no, I really don't want to be in that lock business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, when, when you're saying all that, I'm thinking of, uh, you know, in, in New York State <clears throat> with the um, – registration or being able to uh, exempt yourself from the public database and, and you have to opt out of it. And I think that yeah, it, with the, you know, when you're doing uh, the FOIL exemption, you have to exempt yourself. You have to put the form in so that your name doesn't end up in a database, which is kind of backwards. And that made me think immediately of, of the you know, safe company we're talking about Liberty, where they're saying, well, if you want your information deleted, let reach out to us and let us know. Isn't that what they did? Yeah. Isn't that that they're that they're, they're they're I'm like, what do you mean? Just delete it all. Don't ask me to delete it. Get rid of it. They're they're so afraid of warranty claims. I, I don't understand. I mean, our safes, if somebody loses their combination, now the agile line has an override key. You get two of them, they're the Most only two do. that exist, and you can open it. Our answer safes, um, we were, you know, you, 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 you drill it, locksmith comes in, drills it, and we re we'll, we'll replace the door. We, and we get enough scratch and dents, and this is so rare. It's happened probably in the thousands and thousands of answer safes we've sold, maybe once or twice. Wow. We simply sent them a new door. <laughs> um, hmm. And, you know, it's the type of thing is, yeah, there's some money involved. It doesn't cost much for us. We just take care of it because at the end of the day, we're talking about, fire, you know, deadly force. We're talking, we, we treat customers like we treat our military. You know, we do what we do to make the war fighter, to put him in a better position to win. And our consumers, I feel the same way. We're, our job is to secure your firearms in a way that puts you in a position to win. At the I mean, again, that's why we, that's one of the main reasons we have firearms is, is home defense, personal safety and home defense. Speaking of that, there was a, I think in an Instagram Karen's page, there was a video that you did there at the headquarters. I think it was headquarters, your guys' headquarters, where you had a quick access safe and you had a competition with everybody trying to see who could oh. go the fastest. That was at, that was at the site, wasn't it? Yeah, we were at the site in Illinois. Um, okay. That was our surge event. So we have a training curriculum, like <clears throat> fast access is only fast if you train with your safe. Mm -hmm. So if you never train with your combination, like if 
like at home, I'll like Tom does the same thing. I'll put myself in, in a mental scenario. Like I'm in the, you know, in my living room, I'm in the recliner, something happens. Where am I going to go? You know, where am I going to go? Which safe am I going to access? Can I get into it? Middle of the night. I don't want to turn a light on and give away my position. Can I access my safe and, and do the keys and do my combination without a light? Can I do it by muscle memory? Like, anyway, if you don't train with it, you're going to fumble just like you would, you know, with any type of firearm training. So safe oh, wow. training really parallels that of training with your firearm. Um, so we came up with this curriculum and we kind of launched the, the premise of it in Illinois at our surge event. So we had um, some really great writers out there and some wonderful instructors. And we actually did CQB training with our safe like set up in the shoot houses. Um, and, and we did that. So what, what you saw on the video was our fast box 47, the people that were there didn't know exactly what we were going to do at the training totally. Um, so before we started anything, we did a quick little competition. We told them what the code was. They had to stay in the other room. We said go. And then they, you know, one at a time would come, come out. They had to get into the safe. They had to access the gun and be at a low ready position. And it was just, um, it was a lot of fun because they realized, um, you know, that there's a training gap and it's like the aha moment, like, oh my goodness, you know, but I think too, um, the biggest thing is people will often store their firearms, but they will not store their self-defense guns because they, 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 they believe that's wrong because you have to be able to get to them quickly. So what this really does, this whole training, our safes, decentralized storage. Um, if you do this right, you can always be within a couple of seconds of a firearm that's securely stored and at a low ready within seconds. So that's the, that's how we're trying to change the way America thinks. But yeah, that video you saw was uh, everybody running and fumbling to try to get to the blue gun in the yeah. safe. It was, it was pretty fun. It was good. And it's surprise. I mean, I, I have to commend you guys because training right on your website, I mean, you've got, you know, training for guns. Let's see what do you have it. Yeah. It's called the, uh, Gun safe training, I think. Yeah, gun safe. Is that what it's worded on your website? Anyway, I'm on the wrong page, I think. But right on, I mean, you got a list of training courses for people to take. I mean, it, that's like, I don't think I've ever seen a safe company do something like that where they're actually, you're, you're creating a training for people to train with the safes and you're spot on. How many people, you know, well, you say have the gun on you, have it ready, have a round in the chamber for self-defense because it could happen at any moment. But then at the end of the night, you know, Nobody's going to break in the glass or kick your door in. So put it in a safe and lock it up. And I, I'm impressed that you came up with it yourself too. Cause yeah. even gun companies will say you should get training, but they won't tell you what kind of training to get. And they won't commit. They don't, to they don't want the liability. Right. They, right. They they're afraid of liability, but we're also you use the term a safe company. We compete with safe companies, but I mean, our, our core is building arm. We're the large global leader in military weapon storage system. We build armories mm -hmm. design, you know, that that's, that's a big part of what we do. And everything we do is design systems to, to for warfighter readiness, to make these guys more efficient, to make them, put them in a position to win. And we treat our consumer products the exact same way. We're not a safe company. We're a storage company that provides solutions that properly stores guns, which certainly we can talk about that if you want to, because the gun safe industry, you know, hasn't changed in 75 years and they're still storing guns like they did in the 60s, but we look at it as it's part of your home defense plan. It's yeah. part of your safety plan. And it's just another piece of that puzzle, but good storage, you know, efficient storage, fast access, it all ties together. So, sure. so I think there's some, into... some semantics that gets into play here. I'll, the, yeah. Just one moment, please. The, the, the word safe too, it implies that the only time that that gun is, quote, safe is when it's inoperable or inaccessible altogether. You know, you'll see instructors make your gun safe, implying that they should unload it. Well, that that implies then in, that, in fact, that when the gun is loaded, it is unsafe, which is not the case, not necessarily the case if it's being used properly. So I yeah. think, you know, the way you're putting your words, your terminology about that it's that it's accessible and stored in an appropriate way, as opposed to locked up in a safe, I think is, is uh, very important. Well, it's interesting when you look at access and people think about these, you know, one of the things, you know, do you keep a, do you load it, unload it, round the chamber, not round the chamber. And when you break down the, the actual ergonomics, fast box under my bed, that's racked. 
safety's on. Vertical storage, it's not because for me to access the gun, you open the door, I open one hand, I grab the rifle. As I bring it up, I can rack it and bring it to a, a ready position. It, the ergonomics of it flows so smoothly, but under your bed, I don't have that ability. I don't want to necessarily be that loud mm -hmm. you know, at a night scenario. So I, that's just how I do it. Um, and that's just something I came up with myself. I'm just kind of looking at, you know, again, as a musician, my background was always mm -hmm. about in doing, in playing guitars about the most efficient way to do this, you know, the efficiency of motion, because as you get faster, the efficiencies have to be there or you get sloppy. Yep. Now I will say, if you go look at, um, we started videos, we're going to elaborate on them more, but like, um, as a safe company and as a firearms instructor, I would never tell somebody, here's how you need to store your gun, right? I know how I do it. <laughs> and, but like what we go into is there are, so to do this and it's kind of like your safe becomes a holster for your house in various places, right? Mm -hmm. And so any safe that's set up as a home defense safe has to be set up differently than a safe that you would have as just storage, right? So you designate what firearms, you designate which safes, and then that becomes your home defense safe. So these videos go into, here's everything you need to think about. You have to think about maintaining clearance around your gun, trigger, trigger, you know, trigger protection, things like that. Um, because the best way would be to store it loaded, right? So you're ready to go. So you open the door, you can draw from the safe, you're already ready, you're ready to go. But maybe somebody's uncomfortable with that. So then we go into, okay, if you're going to store it, you know, without one in, in the chamber, you need to dry fire from your safe and practice racking your slide. You need to practice, you know, do it the same way every single time so it becomes muscle memory. Does that, does that make sense? So we kind of go into, so that everybody's comfortable. Um, so whatever you choose, or if you're not even going to store it loaded, then you have to have a magazine at the ready with your gun so you can load make ready as soon as you go. Now, all of that's going to take more time than if it's stored loaded with one in the chamber, but um, just kind of like Tom was talking about. But And then we talk about proper indexing, where, where you would position that, which makes our safes great for this because we have that configurable design, the modularity. So like you know, if I'm five seven, but somebody else is just five foot, you know, it's not predetermined within the safe where your index or where your reach would be. So that we have a whole landing page with all the videos that kind of goes into all of that. So um, even if somebody's uncomfortable with certain things, they can still set that up to where it works for them. Well, uncomfortable is one thing, but they ultimately need to be confident in their ability yeah. to use that product. So that yeah. just comes with practice and getting it mm -hmm fitted to their to their mobility i could see where that where you were talking about the different heights and things like that you know if if my mom had to reach down to get a gun out of a, that would never happen she can't bend over because she's old and and frail so it would need to be in a certain place you know and right. i suppose if my son who's like almost a foot taller than me now he would probably want to reach a little bit higher <laughs> exactly so i have yeah. a safe set up for home defense here one of them my son who's 22 has access to that he's still at home um, his reach is different than my reach, mm -hmm. but it's set up for two shooters, right? So at any point in time, if he has to get in there, we can, but we have enough clearance, all the things. So yeah, it's, but it's kind of fun to, um, experiment in the way Tom has always had these states designed. They just always made sense to me. Um, even with the, uh, uh, Tom, what do we change it to? It's not linear, linear anymore. It's straight line um, access. Clear line. Yeah. Straight line straight access. Line access. Straight line access. Yeah. <laughs> Look at which, that. which goes back to your guitar playing stuff. If you're <laughs> an, an E well, and an A, you don't want to hit the E and the A up here, then back down. No, well, it's, late. it's when you store guns, it comes down to like with, with touch points. So again, taller, shorter, the safe adjusts you, how you can put up or down so that when the door opens ergonomically for you, you're you're grabbing the gun in the, in the same place. Ever, even in the dark, it becomes, you know, in the dark, those touch points become very important to, mm -hmm. to be in a position, again, I'm not the ex. Karen's more the expert at that end of it, but it's we're just trying to again. It's it's not rocket science. It's really simple stuff. It works really well. Well, and really, it's really you in can store it with the optic, and so they okay. don't bump into each other, mm -hmm. and it's ready to go. I mean, it's just and and it's always been like that with these safes, and that's why yeah. I fell in love with the company. I'm like, this just makes sense. Like, I don't have to worry about anything getting scratched or lose my zero or anything like that. So. Smart. Yeah, some of the most innovative products that I've seen in this industry have come from folks that don't have a background in firearms. 
you know, you're, you're looking at this a lot like a musician as I look like a lot of the things that I teach and work with. And it's not, I don't have that reverence to the way it was always done. And, you know, I totally respect Colonel Cooper, but I think he might do things a little bit differently now with some things because of what we know about the body and the brain and stuff. So coming at it from a different industry or from a different mindset, I think is, is refreshing. It, it, it worked out great for us because we set out to solve a problem. We had, I'd never seen a military weapon rack. I didn't know what they looked like. I was presented with a problem. We actually, um, Guy and Gary worked for, we went to Home Depot and walked the storage aisle, just get, trying to get ideas of how, how, how does America store stuff? We called it Home Depot development and uh, <laughs> came up with a solution that, and then the other side of it is, don't, don't engineer complexity to show the world how clever you are. The greatest, the greatest solutions are, you know, the sim simplest solutions are the greatest ones. And we wanted something that would require no, no instructions, something that was so simple that you could look at it intuitive and just start using it. And there's instructions for assembly of like some of the cabinets and things, but the actual cradle grid system, we give you pictures to show you ideas of some of the capabilities, but there's no instructions. You don't need them. It is very, very simple. It's that whole necessity breeds invention mindset, right? Yeah. And relate it's the known to the unknown. As you're saying that, it makes me think of like you, both you guys talking about the music stuff. I, I relate vehicles and driving to a lot of the stuff in the gun industry because people can relate with that. You know, that hooked on phonics kind of stuff. Hooked on phonics. You know, hooked on phon wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm <laughs> age of my, I'm dating, dating my age here now. Huh? Oh, Enix. Yeah, right. <laughs> so anything new uh, that's coming out, anything that uh, you can uh, release here on the show and put out there? That... A lot, lot of neat things are coming along. The, the Fastbox 36, which is a modular drawer, goes mm. can go in the back of a SUV or vehicle, also goes nice. under your bed, drawer pulls out, it's fast. Um, we're looking at an end box for, for pickup trucks, long pull. Mm. And then uh, we're looking at... Uh, a modular relocatable uh, handgun safe. That's going to be, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that one, but that one's going to be a pretty big departure from what people are used to wow. um, in terms of capability of, of handgun safes. And it'll provide somebody who has like single mom or somebody who just has one handgun. It's going to allow you to position that in a fast access secured safe anywhere in your home and move it around quickly as you move, as you move up in the morning, it goes in your kitchen. It's, mm. it's a relocatable fast access security system for handguns. Nice. You heard it hurt. You heard it here first people. You heard it. That's right. <laughs> breaking I, breaking I the that. ground. That, that's what sold me on secure years ago because I was that single mom. You know, when I first got my gun, I was terrified to carry it. I was terrified of it until, you know, I broke it down and demystified it, but I was afraid of it. I thought it was going to just go off at any time. And so, you know, I had two little kids. And so something like that would have been amazing because I could have fast access to it, but not be afraid. And I don't, I, I couldn't afford to have the arsenal I have now. So, you know, <laughs> having just one gun, I would need something that I could move with me. You know, if we're going to spend the evening in the living room, I'll have it there. If I'm going to, at night, I'm going to put it in my bedroom. But so, yeah. And that's what I love about Secure It because, Everything I do, like throughout my whole career, everything I've done has been to resonate with the everyday gun owner. Because when I first started, even just to find training, everybody was jumping out of helicopters. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the things. And I'm like, you know, doing chin ups and pulling their, I'm like, that's not what I need. It was very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I was blessed to find a trainer that was actually, you know, what he did was applicable to my life, but like, mm -hmm. this is secure. Like it's not intimidating it makes sense and it's a, it's a real solution to a real need for everyday gun owners so yeah if they're able to take that that movable box i mean not knowing what your design is i'm just going to call it this mystical yeah. movable box if they're able to take that with them throughout their place of work or their house you know we we talk a lot about like hicks laws you know if there's more options the less likely you are to make a decision quickly in a in a panic situation but if you always have that box to your right sitting next to you, no matter where you are, then I can grab the box. So that would be tremendously beneficial with decision-making under stress, as opposed to going like, oh, I got one under the plant there and I've got one under the TV there and I got one, over, which one do I go to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, I mean, you're, yeah, you're again, you just, it comes down to building 
a few repeatable patterns in terms of your access. You don't, I mean, yeah, you're not going to be able to run across the house and do something you haven't done before. It's going to be, it's going to take you some time. You know, yeah. Stumble and fall and step on that Lego. Oh, the Lego exactly. is the <laughs> Yeah, I wrote it. I don't know if you saw that, Matt. I, I had an article come out about uh, trying not to predict things that we can't predict on the range. And one of it was about stance. Like, okay, your stance is going to be what it is based upon the terrain. So my stance on carpet in bare feet in the bedrooms would be one thing, but if, as soon as I step on a Lego, it's going to be something different. <laughs> right. So we shouldn't like get down to the centimeter of like placing our feet in the yeah. exact spot every time. Cause it's just dependent upon terrain. But uh, so I just thought I'd plug that's my good. article that's on PDN right now. There you go. That's good. <laughs> when you took mentioned the, the Lego connection. That's good. Well, they call the, uh, um, Third group, Fort Bragg calls our rack, our big model 84. They call it the Lego rack. That's because cool. The modularity. They start at the bottom with all the accessories and they just build each one, whatever they need inside. Jeez, I haven't, I haven't been in a uh, unit armory since the 90s when I was in the army. Yeah, that's old school. That's the old, yeah. the old M21 pipe frame. Yeah, and I don't even remember. Like, I'm trying to picture it and I don't, all I know is there was like, hundred thousand dollars in guns in there if not more you know eight hundred thousand right. dollars in guns it was insane now and probably now a million dollars with a racks <laughs> probably <It's, laughs> the guns are easy now it's all the high value gear that ends up in the yeah. armory the armory is where all nah, the high it's... value gear goes and that's where mm -hmm. our biggest challenge is that's where our, our newer solutions we call the armory of the future oh. um is a modular drawer system um uh, we just completed a eight million dollar project in uh, okinawa um, for nice. the three MEF Marine Corps. And that's, we're hoping to roll that out Marine Corps wide. That's awesome. That's exciting. You, you had, uh, you'd mentioned the vehicle one and I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to be upgrading one of our vehicles to a truck soon. And yeah, I'm like, I need to get something because I wanted to yep. do something in the car, especially with all the stuff going on. I want to, I want to do an AR in there that's cruiser ready, but my wife takes the car in New York state. Well, as you know, Tom, you can't have a loaded gun in a vehicle. I can because I'm law enforcement. My wife can't. So if, if she's out with the car and my gun's in the car, that could be a problem for her if something happens. So I'm not going to do that until I ha we have dedicated vehicles. And right now we're down to we're down to one because we helped our son get a vehicle. Do you have a locking device for your <laughs> for your tractor, Matt? Yeah, it's called a key. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's a good point because our, yeah. our farm stand our, our cash box and our farm stands but broken into twice just in the past month month wow. month and a half yeah and uh so i'm like geez that's 800 feet from the tractor the snowmobile the four-wheeler that i keep keys in even my truck my crappy pickup truck i used to plow the driveway as you keep the key in it uh, but uh, now i'm starting to think okay i gotta bring those keys in and hang them up well i was half kid and think that you needed to put a gun rack box in your tractor because you're on your tractor so much because you're a farmer that's true that's true I, that a lot. <laughs> I have a i have a uh i've got we have a 500 acre hunting ranch secure ranch and i do have a a, a i built to it holds a lever action rifle on my tractor Can, it's really more for like coming across a coyote yeah mm. i did it i have yet to come across a coyote while on a tractor it's still cool. Do you That's wear so a cool. denim vest with sheep skin underneath of it? You it? <laughs> you, you kind of have to, right? You know <laughs> I do have a cowboy hat, but not typically. I'm a, I'm more just old school flannel guy. But yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, That's that. Most cool. mornings I'm out there on a, doing something. About five. So where do I order that tractor mounted lever action holster thing? For I, I made it. I just fabricated this thing, and it, it's <laughs> not good to the. I mean, the, it's an old beat up gun that rat. It's it's. Gotcha. I've, I've used it once in reality. I made it because I thought it'd be cool. Yeah. It's... <laughs> well, that's, that's fun, man. That yeah. is cool. Yeah, that is cool. But now you got me thinking, Clint. Yeah, they'll see um, again. Thanks. thanks. We, we do, um, our product development is done with wood, hammers, welders. There you go. Not on CADs, not on computers. I do everything old school, fabricate. I, I basically smash what I want into something and then send it out to somebody to say, give me a CAD of this. This is the this is the function I want. Now, form wise, let's clean this up, and that's kind of how we do it. So it's always proof of concept in real world situations. We don't do, you know, so much stuff is design CAD only. Which hey, if you're designing cars, saves millions of dollars. But stuff like gun storage, I'm thinking you overdo it. I see some products that they're so slick with design. I'm like, but is all that actually helping? Mm. Profound. You know, 
Keep removing things until it breaks and then put one thing back and you've got your product. Uh, I guess that's kind of how it works. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that was kind of like troubleshooting in the military when I was a radio comms maintainer. Yeah. Could replace one thing and if it fixed it, that's it. If it didn't, mm -hmm. put it back, replace the next thing. Right. So, the, so the car, when I was there uh, last year, did I, did you fix that issue with the car that you had? Which one? <laughs> which car which issue <laughs> well I've, I've got i've got a 68 corvette that i've there's my daily driver that's yeah. running pretty well i'm building a 66 ford falcon nice. um, i'm behind i'm supposed to be painted this summer i'm going to try to get it painted this winter and then that'll be my uh my first car was a 66 falcon when i moved when i moved to hollywood i drove it for six years and i loved it and i sold it it was a piece of crap was so it i confirmed? found one rust free and now i'm building a Nice. Resto mod, hot rod, air conditioned, modern suspension, oh. um, five speed. It's going to be a slick little car. That's cool. So that's my therapy. Every morning I'm in, I go into my office. I spend about an hour, one to two hours in the shop, either banging a prototype out or working on a car. I just busy hands, freeze, free mind allows me to think. Very true. Very cool. So cars, music, and secure it. Guns, cars, and guitars. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you yeah go. he's got a plan. <laughs> yeah, right. For sure. For sure. Well, very cool. So, uh, would you guys like to tell everyone how they can get a hold of you, or email you, or websites, those kind of things? You know, Google Secure It. It's that easy. We're all over social media. Uh, Secure It Gun Storage is our consumer products uh, website. Secure It Tactical is our military. We're just rolling this out, though. We we want to establish secured experience centers. In the, within the U.S., people want to see our product. I mean, hmm. asking somebody to spend a couple thousand dollars on an internet picture, I mean, we have a buy it back guarantee and all, but still, it's a reach. So we're establishing a uh, a um, customer experience center at Paramount Tactical in outside of Washington D.C., which is Gary Melton's training facility. Uh, we've done a lot of work with him, and then we're looking at the the site. Um, or at um, gun site, we're, we'll have yeah, one gun, gun site. site as well. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. fly. I'm gonna fly out the gun site. I'm hoping uh, in October to sit with them and really they want to put together an experience center there. I love working with those guys. Um, and then we may look at one in Las Vegas and one in Orlando. Nice, cool, Just very so cool. Can come in and actually see because until you actually move stuff around and use it, it's hard to people don't people don't always get it. Uh, Tom, we also are going to have um, one at um, Fieldcraft Survival in North Carolina okay, where right. they do training. Mm -hmm. yep. There'll be one there as well. That's a we, great idea. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. People are tactile. They like to get their hands on it. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, I mean, let's face it. I mean, not I'm only sp I can only speak from a guy's standpoint because I'm a guy, but there's a reason Legos are one of the most popular toys for kids. And yeah. same with Tinker Toys because... True. It's not a toy. It's a, it's something that allows you to make the toy. And our storage solution is really, it's a tool that allows each operator, each user to, to create the safe that meets their needs. And these guys take, I mean, people, they, they're reconfiguring this stuff all the time and sending photos to us. Check this out, check, you know, cause mm. they're just, you know, they're just have fun with it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and our gun wall panels i made um well oh, with the help of a gentleman that we work with steven he actually made it i put together i have a spice rack in my pantry wow oh, sweet that's cool. it was a it's pretty cool <laughs> yeah. very cool so, send Fun. send a picture of that and we'll throw it on the show i will <laughs> yeah. is it a, a tactical spice rack it is a tactical spice rack yeah okay. and the guy that kind of helped build it steven what is he into, Tom? He took his gun wall panel and just decked it out with oh, his Renaissance he, weapon. He does Dazzled. the old fashioned Viking ah. sword fighting. He's full full metal armor, full contact. Oh, cool. Wow. These guys, he's a big guy. These guys kill each other. I mean, they're yeah. just getting the snot out of each other. Yeah, but his I, wall looks cool. <laughs> it does. It's it's uh yeah, it's a lot of money in it. And uh, that's cool. So he invested that, and now we get the wall decked out with it. it does look really good. That's nice. cool. You have a, a colleague of mine, Travis Frazier, out in California. He he does that or has done that in the past, and like traveled the world, and they had teams, and yeah, yeah, it's pretty. Didn't know that it was that extensive. Not being no, someone that and, was in. It. Yeah. You know, I like a good adventure. I like taking some risk, 
I don't want to get hit with a big sword. No. <laughs> There's no scenario where that I, works for me. I don't want to get hit with a big anything, really. <laughs> yeah, that's uh that sounds like fun. Not. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Super. Well, it was awesome having you guys. Um so yeah. so thank you so much for coming on and talking about what you do and keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having us. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it. You bet. All right. Have a great Take night. Care. Stay safe. Bye, guys. Bye. There's a lot of sponsors that make this show possible, like Mantis. Make sure you check them out and give them your business. This episode is brought to you by Saber Red, pepper spray and safety products for all Americans. Next Level Training, makers of CERT training products. Mantis. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Firearms Owners Against Crime Institute for Legal, Legislative, and Educational Action. Meet the Pressers is also supported by other shows, companies, and our Patreon members. Thank you. Thanks for watching or listening to our show. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share. Click that little bell thingy so you know when the next episode's uploaded. Support us on Patreon. Come to one of our classes. Host us to come to you and do one of our classes at your location. And until next time, adieu. Thank you for watching Meet the Pressers.